Welcome back to Beer TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. It's Jordan Drake here. And I'm holding a Panasonic S5 II because our launch video for the initial review of this camera just came out on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, please do check that out. Yeah, I also want to mention we've got a second S5 II that's filming us right yeah. now with autofocus in the 6K open gate mode. And I'm not going to be doing a lot of zooming. I'm just going to be cropping in post so you can see how you can actually take advantage of that extra resolution. Right. Now, what are we doing here today? Well, the fact of the matter is that this just came out and you know, while the iron's hot, we thought we would strike with a video talking about really the big change here, which is phase detect autofocus. Something that Panasonic has just implemented. How is that gonna affect the company now moving forward? Yeah, and we were just doing a predictions video when we were in Japan where yes. we knew about this camera yes. <laughs> and had some predictions for Panasonic where we couldn't talk about phase detect autofocus now that it's out there, we can actually discuss what we think this means for all of the future Panasonic lines. So Jordan, I think the biggest change that we're gonna see right off the bat is actually to Panasonic's reputation as a camera manufacturer. Because the fact is, there aren't many companies left that are avoiding phase detect autofocus. All the big players are using phase detect or advanced hybrid detect autofocusing systems and they work really effectively. And honestly, Panasonic was getting really bad rap. People didn't like the jitters, of course. People just didn't have any confidence shooting their cameras and it was really starting to hurt their brand, especially when it came to photography, but video as well. Yeah, I mean, whenever we'd post a video about Panasonic, most of the comments would be like, Panasonic has bad autofocus. Yes. I don't care, their autofocus sucks. I mean, that's kind of what they've become known for, yeah. unfortunately. Where now, I mean, what else are they gonna be known for now that they have phase detect? It's like really good video features. I mean, that's <laughs> a better thing to be known for. Well, for sure, and it makes a lot of sense because we, I think people have to understand, you were primarily using Panasonic cameras for years, but in manual focus mode 100% of the time. You yeah. know, that was your workflow, but there are advantages to being able to do movement and have the camera track properly. And there was a lot of times where you were starting to shoot Sony's and Canon's for the videos, really just to open up that aspect, despite the fact that you actually preferred all the assist tools and the video capabilities that the Panasonic cameras you know, always gave you. Yeah, I mean, now I've shot a couple episodes on the S5 II, and yeah, I'm treating it just like any of my other Panasonic bodies. I've got the waveform I like, the vlog profile I love working with. I just have the option now, if I want to, to click that autofocus switch and suddenly I can have Chris moving towards the camera without like setting marks or anything like that. I mean, it really is the best of both worlds. Okay, so Panasonic comes out with the S5 II. It's probably uh, one of the best video cameras for the price point, yeah. punches well above its cost when it comes to video capabilities. Yeah. But what about their higher end cameras moving forward? What's something like your favorite, the S1H? Yeah, I, mean, I think an S2H is gonna happen. Right. The S1H was probably the most popular body in the S series. And they could really go two ways, I could see. What I hope they don't do is just bring over some of the features from the GH6, like the punch in focus, right. um, the four channel audio, and use that same 24 megapixel sensor with now phase detect auto. That'd be a very on. minor upgrade. Yeah. yeah, not a lot of R&D to do that, but I think it would be pretty underwhelming. I really want to see, for the premium you're paying for that series of cameras, a faster scanning sensor. Like, you know, mm. what, then even something like what Sony uses in the A9, like a 24 megapixel megapixel but very fast sensor right because that's going to unlock you know we no longer have to crop in 4k 60 maybe even get 4k 120 we're going to have less wobble in the shots and it's going to help the autofocus system as but well. still maintain that excellent full frame image quality and low light performance that they're known for. yeah and that video centric body with time code and all that mm -hmm. good stuff cf express so we can do high data rates that, that would, would be my ideal. ideal yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about photocentric cameras now. And this is where, honestly, I'm a little bit skeptical. I just don't know what Panasonic's gonna do because yes, going forward, you would assume they'd put phase detect into any new body they make. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, the S1, the S1R, I mean, those were great bodies. They were large and bulky, but they were great ergonomics, great features, you know, multi-shot high res modes. Image quality was never the issue. They did that well. People didn't buy them because they didn't have phase detect hybrid autofocusing systems. And so going forward, if they're gonna do that now with these cameras, are they even gonna bother to put all that effort and attention into that? It would take a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious because I know they started with the S5 too, because they look sure. at the market and they're like, we're competing against, you know, Z6 II or a Canon EOS R, you know, R6, yeah. Sony A7 III, these older bodies where the autofocus isn't as sophisticated, but if they're gonna make like a premium photography camera, now it's gonna be competing against a7 IV, Canon R6 II, yes. uh, they're gonna have to have a significantly better autofocusing system for it. Even with a little bit of movement, sometimes I couldn't get a lot of shots in, in focus unless I was in the right mode. And uh, I just think if they wanna do sports, action, that kind of stuff, well, it might have to improve a little bit. Okay, but let's, let's say that they bring in like a very yeah. cutting edge autofocus right. system. Is that enough for the S1 replacement, S1R replacement to be competitive? 
I think if they can get over people's misgivings just about the brand name when it comes to photo, then yeah, I mean, really, those bodies were capable. Maybe the ergonomics could be changed, but let's remember that the image quality is great, and they also have an extensive line of lenses, right? I mean, you've got Panasonic lenses, you've got Leica lenses, you've got Sigma lenses, lots of third-party support for L mount. So in that regard, actually, it gives you a bigger lens lineup than a lot of other companies can even do. Yeah, like than Canon and Nikon. I mean, Sony is clearly sure. the big question there, but I mean, Sony just keeps making small bodies. Bodies. If you want a bigger, chunkier body with good autofocus and a lot of lens options, then yeah, those might actually make sense. Another thing, Chris, we shouldn't forget is there is an alliance between Sigma, Panasonic, and Leica, but now there's this L2 thing where Panasonic right. and Leica are developing processors together. And I mean, we don't know for sure, but I would be very surprised if we don't now start seeing phase detect autofocus in Leica cameras as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously the SL bodies have always been very similar to Panasonic's S. I think right. that's kind that of a no-brainer. We'll see that. But why not move that into something like Q2s or Q3s or whatever Q3 they're going to be in? Q3 with phase detect that autofocus. That would be pretty cool. That would be you pretty know, banging. Absolutely. So. I mean, maybe range finders, they could actually get like phase detect to confirm your focus when you're manually oh, that focusing. Would be, that would be no, really that would sweet. be a traditional travesty. No, you can't do that. That's, that's too far. You've gone too far. You're mad. Uh, let's talk about Micro Four Thirds. Okay. What about the GH6, Jordan? I mean, a lot of people are saying, why would you even buy that when you can get a full frame camera at the same price point that has the new autofocus? Yeah, and the GH6 has the advantage of the faster readout. You know, 4K 120 without a crop. Sure. Uh, things like that, that they're just not gonna be able to touch with the slower sensor of the S5. The thing that's really surprising to me is when they chose to roll the GH6 out. Like, why didn't they just wait a little longer? We waited forever for the GH6 <laughs> so it had phase detect autofocus because perceptually that is really well known now as a camera with bad because autofocus. Because you could just again. do a GH7, right? Like they've got a few more numbers to go during the I mean, they had like five years between the last <laughs> two models. I wouldn't be shocked if they did like a GH6S or something. Right. They had like phase detect autofocus otherwise very, very similar. And that would be a banging camera, absolutely. It would take care of one of the main weaknesses that people have with that camera. But they have other lines in Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, Micro Four Thirds is not dead, absolutely. I mean, people still do want to have compact, rugged cameras with compact lenses that are fast shooting. But again, the question really comes down to is, again, Panasonic gonna to push towards the photocentric cameras or just go video? I would love to see like a brand new G9, which yep. everybody universally loved back in the day, but yes, it needs better autofocus. Yeah, I mean, the big question there is just gonna be what sensor would it use if they brought that? I don't think they can use the old 20 megapixel sensor no. again. Uh, the GH6 sensor, you know, has some very capable things for video, but it wasn't a great photography sensor, especially at base ISO, like not very no. good. So I think <laughs> if they could get their hands on the sensor that OM system is using in their OM1, you know, yeah. that very fast readout, combine that with phase detect autofocus. I and mean, the OM1 is a great photo camera, but it has Absolutely. so many weird video quirks that Panasonic would never let happen. So if you wanted like a hybrid camera, photo, video, I think there's still a market for that. That's, that's a, a G9 replacement. That's a very good point because because I think OM system is actually doing very well now with the OM1 in regards to having good autofocus and good subject detection. So yeah, Panasonic has an opportunity for an actual just, true hybrid steel. Swoop right in there. So during this video has been a lot of like what ifs and I hope so is moving forward. So any other what ifs or I hope so I mean, before we wrap it up? We've been talking about just like expensive camera, like the most entry level one we talked about was a G9 replacement, sure. which is still gonna be a pricey camera. But I would love to see Panasonic get back to the roots. I mean, their most, Famous photocentric camera was the GF1, early micro four thirds. I would love to see them get back into small bodies. Now they got phase detect autofocus where it'd be super accurate and you've just got this little, like a like a GM. What if they brought nope, back I a don't. GM and it's tiny <laughs> and you're like pop, pop, good autofocus. Pop, Nobody pop. on this planet wants a new GM worse than I do. I love that camera. I just feel with the small sensor, you're already getting lots of depth of field. The phase detect autofocus is gonna be that big an improvement and like that market, the smartphones just, I'm sorry. I, I just don't think it's gonna happen, Jordan. I think, I think Panasonic's gonna focus on the big stuff, compete with Sony, Canon, Nikon, moving, that's, that's what I think they gotta do. I think you're just being a bummer, uh, although sorry. I don't totally disagree with you, but let us know if you disagree with us. What do you think? <laughs> does this change everything for Panasonic? I yeah. think in some ways it definitely does, but yes, let us know in the comments below. While you're doing the comments, look down below, there's the socials, you might as well clickety click on those, and do like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, we would absolutely appreciate that. And uh, otherwise, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon with another episode of Peerview TV. Thanks so much for watching GM6. I would love it. <laughs>